Go, go, go. I woke up like this. Ow. I woke up like this. <laughs> Peace, blessings, and much love given to you, you, and you, and you. I got the damn giggles. I, uh, maybe it's the sage. Because <laughs> the sage is supposed to rid up neg negative energy when you're burning and walk through your house. Maybe it's the sage that got me high. <coughs> Excuse me, but, um... Peace, blessings, much love to you. You, you, you look like a hippie right now with my um choker on. This is my strong. This is called. Wait a minute. This is an amistad or the tiger eye. I think this is the amistad. But yeah, I wear my stones, my candles, my incense. And I got my new book. But um, yeah, I'm thankful for my eyes that I can see. I'm thankful for my ears that I can hear, and I'm thankful for my mouth that I can speak. But I must maintain positivity with all three, cause I must watch. I must be paid. My I must be mindful for the things that I view. I must be mindful for the things that I listen to, and I must think be mindful for the things that I speak. So with that being said, I'm trying to maintain a positive life style from here on out. I understand that I'm still going to go through trials and tribulations because. This is a cruel world. We're living in hell right now. Hell and heaven is a state of mind. Right now, we we create our own hell and or we create our own heaven. Right now, I'm trying to create a heaven for my household. But um, I know that I'm going to continue going through trials and tribulations because that's how you learn from your experiences. But the one thing I did learn over the past week, maybe over the past month, is be careful. You don't have to always react to your situations. You don't have to respond to it. Sometimes things is going to happen that you may not have no control over. But the way you act, react, or respond to it will determine your maturity. Your maturity level. And I'm learning. Like I said, I experienced some negativity. And I just, when I prayed about it, I kept quiet. And it all worked out for us good. So, I'm good. But I won't stoop to the next woman's uh, childish behaviors. Because I can... Because I don't consider myself no little girl. I'm a grown-ass woman. Matter of fact, I'm a queen because I rose above a lot of stuff to be able to say that. I respect my body. Like, no one cannot touch this unless he got this. And we took them vows. Like, I don't want to be with no man that is not the one marriage. And right now, I can't get married to the way you <laughs> Because I'm still married. Separated, yeah, but I, I'm not. I'm still married. And then my other video, I said I was a married single woman because that's how I got to call it. Because when someone asks me, someone interested me, and the first thing I say, you single. How I'm going to tell them, yeah. How I'm going to say I'm single, then they get involved with me, fall in love with me, want to marry me. And then at the end, I'm going to say, oh, I can't marry you because I'm married to someone else. So... I ain't about that lying. So, what is it? I'm married single. That's not, yeah, I'm married, but I'm not with them. And like I said before, I'm not trying to be with nobody because right now I'm trying to grow. I'm not trying to create any more karma debt for my for me while I'm still living. I'm trying to stay free of karmatic debt because what we what we dish out is what we get back. What we sow is what we're going to reap. What we do unto others is going to come back. And I ain't trying to be in no relationship with no one. Leading them on when I know damn well I can't give you 100% of myself. I can't take your last name. You can't authorize uh, um, authorize medical decisions for me. Like, I'm not even about to put no man through that mess because it's not fair to him. So, I chose and am choosing. To be free of men because I still have a man, a husband that I'm not married to. And I don't give a damn what other people say. Because I cannot say I believe in the divine spirit, but I'm out here being a hoe. I cannot be say I want the divine spirit to bless me and my household, but I'm living recklessly. No. You do wrong, you reap bad benefits. That's all to it. And if you get a good benefit from reaping a bad benefit... You best to believe that bad benefit that you should have got is going to be worse for you because you received something that you shouldn't have received. Peace, blessings, and much love on that. But anyway, this is just some chit chat because I'm home chilling because I had the day off from work. Work for Head Start. Work with the little kids ages 3 to 5. And when the school district is closed, we're closed. 
So it's Young Kipma, Kimpa, Kipa, Jewish holiday today and tomorrow. So right now, I'm just talking right up with my lovely mouth. But I was, get off of that. Get. So anyway, I do give thanks to my divine because he opened up the doors. And my eldest daughter, age 29, is purchasing her house. She closed today. And I am so thankful for her. She, she set her goal. And she worked. And she did the footwork. To reach her goal, the God opened up the doors and she met the requirements. She did what she needed to do. She wanted the house. She got to get it. She got it. And I give thanks to my creator for opening up that door and giving her the willpower to do what she needed to do to reach her goal. And she just keep reaching her goal. She got a driver's license. She got a degree. Now she got a house. Praise God for that. So anyway, I was watching one of my favorite shows. Not nice with why wise with nice, not that one. <laughs> not the first 48 hours. I was what well, not snapped. I was watching one called Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction. So this episode is about a man. My fingernails need done. A man who is living a life of polygamy, which means he have more than one wife. Not legally married because you cannot get legally married to more than one wife. So it must be just something he created because he didn't seem like he was. Because I know in Muslims they say they can have four wives, but his religious is not recognized by the state. But anyway, he was in a polygamous relationship with four other women. Now, the fourth woman who happened, because this is what the story was about, who happened to come on to scene is a woman. She didn't know what she was getting into at first. This is what we get when we don't ask questions and we don't do background checks and stuff like that. So, but when she found out that he was actually, that she would be living in the house with three other women plus him, she readily accepted. Why did she accept? Because she wasn't loving herself. And she was looking to be loved by this man. She wanted his attention and his affection and his love. So she agreed to be wife number four. As I said, the fourth woman, she agreed to be in this polygamous relationship being wife number four. <coughs> so the husband, the man, the head of the household, the man who was controlling all four of these women, was... You know, using the Bible as his tool of control, his tool to manipulate their minds and have them believe things not true. Now, the fourth woman who came from a Christian background, brought up in the church, know about the Bible. When the man, the man of the house, house began to preach about the little boy, because one of the women had a four-year-old son, and she brought her son into this situation. Oh, my gosh, I say. Mm-mm-mm-mm. But she brought her son into the situation. Now, the father of the son is gay, openly gay. But her new man in her life uh, disapproved of that. And he had the women thinking that the four-year-old son, because the four-year-old son's father is gay, that the little boy is going to be gay as well. So he began brainwashing them and because they looking for love and want to be loved by this man and want his affection, they have done everything. He, they will do anything he tells them to do, what to do. So they began to mistreat this little boy based on the fact that his father was openly gay. So they saying he's going to be gay, which is not true. So they began to not give the little boy any affection, not... Not doing what they supposed to do, including the mother. The mother stopped nurturing him, you know, stopped giving him affection. But the fourth woman who came onto the scene, scene disagreed with this man, her new husband, and the rest of the wives. So she began to show affection to the Lord, to the little boy. She began to do what the mom wasn't doing, and it didn't sit right with the mom. So. When the fourth woman went away for vacation to visit her family members, 
they took the time to plan and execute murdering this four-year-old child because his father was gay and they felt that he was going to grow up and be gay too and they could not accept that so they wound up murdering the little boy when the fourth woman came back she wanted to know what happened to the little boy but they all began giving conflicting stories so one day she overheard the mother and one of the other wives talking about who killed the little boy and the mother was saying well i'm glad i didn't have to kill my own son i'm glad the man of the household took care of it, and he killed the little boy, but I don't remember how they killed him. So when she heard this, she immediately ran out the house. She ran out the house, so the three women ran behind her, and the man um, told them to bring her back into the house. So they wound up beating her and then shooting her to death to silence her. And one of the wives... Um, came forward and told the whole story. Now, my thing is this. If you want to not love yourself, and if you want to be looking for love in all the wrong places, go ahead and do you boo-boo. But do not, I repeat, do not bring children into your lifestyle. Because this woman allowed this man to brainwash her and turn her against her own four-year-old son and participate in him being murdered. All for the sake of receiving some attention, love, and affection from a man who did nothing but brainwash him and try to control him. And it is sad that this goes on in the world today, that women are not loving themselves not realizing that love comes from within you. Not realizing that a man would tell you anything he thinks you want to hear to get your ass in bed. He's not thinking about getting you pregnant. Only thing he's thinking about, I'm getting me some. And busting that nut. Half the time, the woman don't even get hers. And women are killing one another or disrespecting one another, or killing their kids, or giving their kids up, or aborting their pregnancies, all in the name of a fucking man. Any man that cheats on you, lies to you, manipulates you, get your ass pregnant. Abandon his children is not a man that has not been raised right. And this is something that you women, we women, whoever needs to learn. When a man loves you, he's going to honor you. And he honors you by respecting you. Taking care of his responsibilities. Making you his damn wife. Praying for you, motivating, encouraging you. Bringing out the best in you. That is what a mature man does. Any man that's willing to get with a woman that's married, well, it's not a man who loves himself. Because he may be looking for love in all the wrong places. Because men do it too. There are men out there with low self-esteem. There are men out there with no confidence. There are men who think they're not good enough to have a good woman, so they settle for a woman less than what they deserve. They, they do it, too. They do it, too, because a lot of men are hurting, too, because their mother didn't give them the love that they needed. Their fathers didn't teach them the things they need to learn to be a good man. But it's so messed up when women stoop so low because she want to be loved by a man that who is not going to love her in the right way. Peace, blessings, and much love.